Well, because you're really supposed to be worshiping God and praising God. Well, why would you worship God and praise God for for what? For His truth. For His truth. That's a great answer, son. You praise and worship God for His holy His holy word, which is His truth, and for Him just being a holy God, even if He never give you another uh, bite of food, even if He never give you another uh, good night of sleep, even if He call, even if He allows and arranges death in uh, uh, your mother or your father's life tomorrow, you still praise His name. Am I right? Yes, sir. That's right. He still would be holy if He take me away from y'all tomorrow. He still will be pure. And he'll never be unholy. But a while ago we just rode past a pagan facility, a pagan synagogue. It was called West End Church of Christ. And they were celebrating what out there? Halloween. Or music. They was they was playing what son? Barbaric music. And, and a worldly barbaric ungodly music, that's right. And uh, a lot of people had on what? Costumes. Costumes. So they were celebrating what? Halloween. Halloween, or I call it what? What do you call it, I? Trick or treat. Well, you know what? It's not truly a treat in the eyes of God, and it's not even a trick in the eyes of God. Halloween is utterly corrupt and utterly pagan in its origin. It's ungodly. And we as believers, you even as young believers, if you truly believe God, first of all, if a man or woman is... Going, to please God, they have to obey His word. Praise God, they have to obey His word. And the Bible says in Jeremiah 10, it says, "Learn not the ways of the heathens." So we are not supposed to learn the ways of the heathen, and we are not supposed to be resembling this ungodly world. But we're supposed to be like the Lord Jesus Christ, day in and day out. Now, they were celebrating what is called, America calls Halloween, and a lot of the world call Halloween. But Halloween comes from and derives from Roman Catholicism. Uh, the Roman Catholics uh, wanted to commemorate or celebrate the day uh, 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 and give some admiration to some of the dead saints that had passed away. And so around October the 31st or November the 1st, they, call, they first of all call it All Saints Day. But as time went along, they end up calling it All Hallows Eve, and, origin, and, and it finally originated to be called Halloween. Well, first of all, there's nothing hollow or holy about Halloween at all. It's corrupt. I right, pay attention. It's corrupt and very ungodly. Now, it, from the Roman Catholic got it from old ancient paganism, of the uh, Celtic nations or the Scottish or British nations. And they used to celebrate a festival, a pagan festival called Samhain, or Sam, some pronounce it as Sam Hain. And it was called a Night of the Dead, where the dead was supposed to resurrect and rise from the dead. And so it is all paganism, and America loves paganism. They celebrate Christmas sin is about Jesus Christ, and Christmas has absolutely nothing to do with Jesus Christ. I love Jesus, and I love him day, and I, I love him every day. And, I, and you and every believer alike should be magnifying his name all year long. But Christmas is utter paganism. And that's what Jeremiah chapter 10 talks about with the, with the pagan worship of the ancient world that Israel got involved in. It was called Isaiah. Bell in the Grove worship, which is now called Christmas of Christ Mass, and that also comes out of Roman Catholicism. America loves paganism. They love it and they embrace it, but they also say they love Jesus. They also say they love Jesus and they lie. Now, we as believers should have the Word of God written up in our hearts. And if a, once again, if a man or a woman is going to please God, they have to obey His Word. They got to obey His Word. And paganism is not righteous in the eyes of God, and a believer has to avoid it. Now, that's why we need the Word of God, am I right? Yes, sir. And, and, and it's the Word of God that changes your mind or converts your soul. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. 
Is it little or H two O? Is it Keshrebo? Is it speaking in tongues? No, sir. It's all paganism. Tell me what conversion so is the law? Of the Lord. Oh, matter of fact, oh, let's let's talk about that. It's, this Psalms 19, verses 7, 8, and 9. 7, 8, and 9. Talk a little bit about it. Verse 7 of Psalms chapter 19 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making it wise and simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord are pure, enlightening the eyes, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous. All together sit, all together sit, all together. Praise God. That's right. And so when you start preaching this truth, you are going to make enemies in this world. You tell the people that Christmas is pagan and Halloween is utterly corrupt and pagan and Easter has nothing to do with the resurrection of the precious Jesus Christ. But it's the resurrection of Tammuz, and you can read about the false god Tammuz over there in Ezekiel chapter 8, when the, even the Levitical priests begin to turn towards the east and begin to worship the sun as it rises from the east. And that was, that was really your first pagan uh, sunrise service, service, even done among the Levites of Israel. They got so involved, involved in paganism, they begin to worship the sun god. Boy, can't we as believers sometimes get involved in idolatry? But God will whoop his sheep and turn them around and make them do that which is just and pure and upright and holy. But listen, I tell you what, since you're going to make enemies in this world, I have to train you up, and you must train up a child, right? You must train up a child in the way that he or she should go. Train up, why? what? What does train up mean? Teach your child to do the truth. Yes. And teach him how to obey God. That's right. Obey God. That's right. And when I do that, that means I'm going to be teaching you things that the world might hate you for. Am I right? Yes, and it's also putting you in tribulation as a, as a young believer. The word train comes from the word the ellipsis, and it means... Uh, the listen, the word the list is come from the word thelebo. And it means tribulation. When I train you up, I'm putting you in tribulation is ungodly world. That to the point that where it will make you and begin to teach you how to be like Jesus because you suffer trouble. Isn't that right, Isaiah? Yes. Truly. Now, you're gonna have enemies when you stand firm for God. It might even be your family. Isaiah and Qua, it might even be your family that may end up being your very enemy. Because Jesus didn't come to bring peace, but he came to bring a sword. Now, he is the Prince of Peace, and he is peace to us because he lives in us, but he comes to bring a sword, and he'll divide even a mama from a daughter, a father from his son. Now, you might make enemies of the people that's in school, but guess what? Even though they might be your enemies, you got to still stand firm on the truth. What does Psalm 68 verse 1 say? Psalm 68 verse, Psalm 68 verse, Psalm 68 verse, Psalm 68 verse says, Let God of, let them that, that said, Let God arise, let us, let them that flee before him. That's Psalm 68 verse 1, right? So when you're in this world, you have to long for truth. Just like six, Psalm 63, verse 1, lets us know we have to long for truth. It says, O oh God, my, thou art my God. My, Early. Lord, I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longs for thee in the dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Where there is no truth. Praise God. And that's the truth. And so when you're in this world, sometimes you'll do wrong and you will do evil in this world as a believer. But you will learn to hate evil, and you will learn to do evil less as you get older in the truth, or God mature you in the truth. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. That's why you got to ask God to keep you or preserve you. Just like Psalm 16, verse 1 says, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. For in thee do I put my trust. Your trust will go to who? God. Oh, I, I know. Well, let me ask y'all this. <laughs> You, 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 who your trust should be in? God. N let me ask you this. Put trust up in your house. No. Trust up in your car. No. Trust up in your mother. No. 
Trust up in your money. No. Trust up in your teachers. No. Trust up in yourself. No. Trust up in his word. Yes. Trust up in his truth. Yes. Oh, y'all boys on it today. <laughs> but I tell you what. You have to put trust up in God. You put trust up in yourself. That's why you got to deny self. Jesus said you got to even hate your own life in Luke 14, verse 26 and 27. Because if you start loving your life, you'll lose your life. You got to hate yourself. And do you know self-esteem? No, self-esteem means, comes from the word alexandria, and it means pride. You don't want pride because God said he hates pride. The world wants pride, but you shouldn't want it as believers. People don't define words and they don't love truth. But check this out. Should you love God or should you hate him? Love him. If you love him, you'll keep his Amen. or his statutes or his Testament. or his precepts or his law. law. Praise God. Y'all boys are on it. Now, what well, you should love God. Psalms 18 verses 1, 2, and 3 tells us we should love God. It says, I will love thee. Oh, God. oh Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortune and my deliverance, my guide and my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckle and in the horn of my salvation, my high tongue. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. So shall I be saved from my enemies. You will make enemies for the truth. You don't go out there to try to make them. You just stand firm and live holy and preach the truth. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. I tell you what, you got to walk in a manner that's pure and that, and that God loves and God respects for his believers to obey him. As a matter of fact, I know that those are, who are undefiled in the way are blessed. Blessed are the undefiled. In the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and they that seek him with their whole heart. They do no iniquity. They walk in his way. That's Psalm 19 verses 1, 2, and 3. Good. You know what? i tell you what. Now, you must understand that if you want a good name, what, does a name mean how you spell it, J-M-A-R? No. It means your character. The word name comes from the word onoma in the, in the Greek language, and the word name comes from the word shim in the Hebrew language, Hebrew Chaldean language. And the, both of those words means a character or authority. Whose character do you want? God. Whose character do you want? God. God's. Whose authority do you put, are you supposed to walk in? God. Name doesn't mean your title as Jamar or Jim Bob or how you, uh, J-I-M Jim or, or, or Terry or how you spell your name. Your name is the character or the authority you walk in. The way you live. The way you live, dear brother. That's right. Now, I'll tell you what. You should have a good name because a good name is rather... That, you ought to rather choose a good name. That's a matter of fact, Proverbs 22, verse 1 and 2. A good name is rather. Great riches and love and favor rather than silver and gold. The rich and the poor have this in common that the Lord is the maker of them all. The Lord is the maker of them all. In Proverbs 22 and 6, read that. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. That is the truth. Now, I, I love the word of God and I love you, dear brothers. You know what? Go over there. Turn over there, if you will. Turn your Bibles over there to uh, Psalms chapter 8. Psalms 8. Go on back. Psalms 8. Let your brother help you, I. Psalms 8. Verse 1. Got it? Mm-hmm. Right there. So I was 8, verse 1. This is... On the count of 3, I'll let I read it. You got it, I? This, yeah. Read it. Psalms so 8, verse 1. Oh, oh Lord, our, how excellent mm. is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens? Oh my God. Oh Lord, how excellent is thy what? Name. And all the, there go the word name. Does it mean J E S U S how you spell it? Mm -hmm. It means character. It means your character or your authority. How excellent is your character and your authority in all the earth. Who has who has set thy glory above the heavens? 
God is holy, isn't he? Yes, sir. Now, go on, Psalms 9, verses 1 and 2. Says what? You can go, Qua. Go ahead. Um, I will praise you. O Just look Lord. at me. Don't even read. Don't even read. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all of thy marvelous works. I will be glad in your city. I will sing praise to thy name. Oh, thy most high. Y'all boys are on it today. And when people say they don't believe the true Jehovah God when a Mormon don't believe the true Jesus Christ, when a Muslim don't believe that Jesus is the living God in the flesh, or even when any individual don't believe in the true Jehovah God, guess what? They, 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 they put themselves in a place of a fool. And Psalm 14, verses 1 through 3, what does it say, boys? You don't have to you don't have to flip it, just look at pop it and let's say this. A fool in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, they have done abominable works. There is none that do it good. The Lord of God is heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any that understand and seek God. They are all on the side. They are all together become filthy. There is none that do it good. No, not one. Y'all love the truth? Yes, sir. A man gotta train up a child in the way he should go.